John Sauer was born February 19, 1923 in Canton, Minnesota. He went to Harmony High School and before he was able to attend college, there was a change in plans. Well, in 1941, our country was attacked viciously by J J Japanese bombers and destroyed many of our vessels in Pearl Harbor. This motivated the country as a whole to want to do something about this. And so I joined the group that went to enlist. I wanted to be a pilot, of course, as many red-blooded young boys did. So I joined the Army Air Corps. His feelings about the war were confident and he was ready to fight. I was all for it. I felt like uh, I, I couldn't wait to get in. And that was partly ignorance on my part, I suppose, in a way I accepted. As I said before, the whole country was behind this effort. And I, I wanted to be in there as soon as I could. Although John and his brothers were eager to enlist, his mother had some anxiety about it. I'm sure my mother was very concerned about it because she was kind of emotional. <laughs> my father never said much. Sauer's father showed his support by taking his son to a bus station in Minneapolis where he would from there be sent to basic training. It was the middle of winter on a cold day of 42 degrees below zero when an ice storm hit. Well, we skidded into a ditch from that ice, and uh, I was very concerned I wasn't going to get there in time, and I, I, I was going to get in trouble before I even got in the service. But one of the, a far, farmer nearby uh, offered to help pu to pull us out. And he had a team of big draft horses with iron shoes on. And they dragged our car out of the ditch. Well, by driving a little slower, we reached the town where the, the, the bus station was. And... In his experience in his first basic training, conditions were tough. He quickly learned that being a part of the war was harder than he had imagined. And uh, we were all sent to basic training at Jefferson Barracks, Missouri, which is in the St. Louis area, and a famous training center from World War I era. We were there for a number of weeks. It, it was kind of a rugged experience because we, we slept in tents without any heat on, and the temperature was between 5 and 10 below all the time I was there. So. We had to keep our long underwear on and we had a number of blankets to cover up and we slept in our cots. Following basic training, Sauer went to a series of places around the country for further training. At one point, he attended radio school. I happened to be sent to a radio school in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. I was there for 20 weeks studying radio operations and, and, and including the International Morse Code, which at that time was used to communicate from bombers to uh, home base. Speaking of that Morse Code, uh, I learned that during that 20 week period, we, we sp spend half our time each day learning code and the other half learning the theory of a radio operation. And Soon after radio school, he got his first practice shooting a gun. I, I then attended a course in a aerial gunnery where we practiced shooting at moving targets with the 50 caliber machine guns. Each of us had a different color of paint tip on the tip of the uh, 50 caliber guns that we used, and, and they, when they got down, they could, they could count the holes in there, and they could tell 
who actually hit the target. Once Sauer was finished with nearly two years of training, he went to Kearney, Nebraska, where he was assigned to his crew. He and his crew were assigned a plane, but things did not go as planned. Well, the plane we were assigned to developed an engine trouble the day before we were due to take off. So, much to our chagrin, we didn't get to fly a new airplane overseas. We were sent to Newport News, Virginia, and put on board a, a victory ship. The trip to Naples, Italy on the victory ship was 30 days long and very boring. They finally arrived in Italy and began their missions, most to Yugoslavia. Uh, it was kind of uh, interesting. I enjoyed the first few flights over there and saw all the, there was a lot of anti-aircraft fire at it. And uh, after seeing a few planes badly damaged and some of them exploded and, and uh, blew up on both sides of the plane, you could see them. It become not not so much of an excitement, and become a point where you start being a little bit afraid. Their first twelve missions went without any major complications. On, a, on my thirteenth mission, thirteenth mission that I on, we we received a, a lot of dam flak damage, and among other things. Uh, a number of our fuel cells were hit and the fuel drained out. So we had to slow down and we could, and instead of flying in a formation back to home base, we flew by ourselves. And we were losing altitude and, and uh, we got down to the point where we couldn't fly, couldn't get over a, a mountain range in uh, Yugoslavia. We were flying back and the pilot uh, told us over an inter intercom system that we were going to have to bail out. So, uh, he never argued with the pilot when you were a crew member. He was the boss. In midair, Sauer felt the adrenaline of free fall. I found that it to be an extremely exciting experience well, once I was up, clear of the plane. And we, uh, it's just an absolute dead silence when you're on a, in a parachute. We were strung out as we went out one right after another. I think we were around 13,000 feet when, when I bailed out. Uh, one of the, the guy that went out ahead of me, I could see him, he looked, looked to be exactly about a quarter of a mile away, and we tried to yell at each other. We couldn't hear, couldn't hear a sound. But uh, I kept moving and finally did hit, hit the ground, and I landed on a giant, I think, oak tree. My, air, my parachute settled over the top of the tree and I was uh, dangling around 50 feet off the ground, I think. I fell right through the branches and didn't hit a thing. Once down from the tree, a guerrilla fighter came and untangled the parachute. Sauer kept a section of the parachute as a souvenir. After this happened, the crew members were taken to a Yugoslavian village where they stayed for 30 days in a broken down hotel. Instead of beds or anything, we had a pile of straw, which we slept on for a month. We kept our clothes on. We, there was no showers or baths or anything like that. See, we probably got a little ripe by the time we left. They fed us in groups, and our, our meal consisted of uh, some kind of a thin watery soup, which they said was made out of uh, cooking oil. 
that they had captured from the Germans. Once there were enough escapees accumulated in close areas, a convoy took them to the coast where they entered a rigor cruiser back to Italy, where Sauer continued to contribute to the war. Years later, he looks back on his part in World War II and recognizes how much this brought the country together. The country as a whole was behind the people in service at that time, and we were able to, for that reason, we were able to win the war both in Europe and in the Pacific. And it's because of the patriotism of the whole, the, the whole country.